Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Welcome back, darlings. I'm TV host, entertainment journalist, Cognac Willalene. And my next Zoom interview is with exciting filmmaker, Mr. Sean Buttermer. And in just a moment, we are going to see the interview. But first, darlings, please subscribe to my channel. And in a moment, we are going to see a very, very wonderful interview with this very exciting filmmaker, Mr. Sean Buttermer, all about his film, Smoke Screen. Welcome back, darlings. I'm TV host, entertainment journalist, Cognac Willa Lane, and I have a very, very special guest today. He is a very important filmmaker, Mr. Sean Buttermer. Did I say that correctly? Is that how you, you your name, you, Sean Buttermer? You nailed it, and you're one of the few to nail it <laughs> on oh, the first time. Oh. <laughs> I'm so good at what I do. Now, we are going to talk a little bit about you first, and then we're going to talk about this new film that you created, you directed it, mm -hmm. uh, you wrote it, you wrote the screenplay and everything. So, but first we're going to talk a little bit about you. Now, I understand that you are a Southerner. You're from Georgia. And I am. That's correct, right? You're from Georgia. Mm -hmm. Yep, sure. And you were a Marine. That's correct. So now, how did this happen that you became an actor and a filmmaker? Tell us the story. So uh, I think it was the summer of 1994. Uh, my family and I took a trip to Universal Studios in Orlando, Florida. And I just absolutely lost my mind when I got there, just at all the awesomeness that was going on. I loved the fact that you were able to get immersed in the world of each um, <clears throat> of each movie that, that, that was being showcased, whether it was Back to the Future, whether it was Jaws. Um, and I just, uh, you know, became obsessed with the park and everything. And, and from there, so it, it, it kind of... it sounds like you were more interested in, in Disney World, but like don't they, I mean I've been to Disney World. Mm -hmm. They have separate um, separate things like Epcot and Disney World. So it sounds sure. like you're more into the Epcot idea. O originally, yes, and, and and more so Universal Studios. Um, Universal Studios, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. Originally, I was really kind of obsessed with the parks because I mean, obviously, you go and you have an amazing time whenever you. Yeah, get you're to go. a kid. You want right. to have fun. Of course, and so eventually that kind of that kind of uh, springboarded into, I started paying attention more to the movies that you actually did get to write, like a Back to the Future or a Jaws or something like that. And I, and I noticed the way that these stories were being told and I just, you know, absolutely fell in love and uh, it just, just, just loved it and, and started coming up with my own ideas and sketching them out and everything, so. How old were you when this happened? I would have been maybe nine or 10. You want to laugh? Oh. I'm going to tell you a funny story about myself. Mm -hmm. um, my father took me to the movies. I must have been like two or three years old, maybe maybe four years old. I, I know it was before I went to kindergarten. And, you know, he took me to the movies, and I was so mesmerized by what I saw. And I said, Daddy, are those real people up <laughs> on the silver? Because, you know, back in those mm -hmm. days, you know, I'm 100 years old, if you don't know. Richard Allen will tell you. But back in those days in the 60s, you know, you went to the movies, but you went to a fabulous movie theater. Mm -hmm. You sat in a, a, in a beautiful theater, and you saw the stars on a big silver screen, you know. And, and uh, I was, like, mesmerized. I said, oh, my God. I said, Daddy, Daddy, are those real people? And he said, yes, honey, they're real people. And he said, I said, well, what are they? And he said, they're actors. And mm -hmm. I said, Daddy, when I grow up, I want to be an actor. Mm -hmm. But, you know, of course, coming from an old-fashioned Italian family, 
I was not allowed to become an actress. Uh -huh. Only Bhutanis do that. You, you're a nice <laughs> Italian girl. You need to get married and have babies. But, you know, and, but now I did become an actress, so to speak. I've been in a movie. I've been mm -hmm. in a couple of movies. But mm -hmm. I love doing what I do right now. So you were like nine or 10 years old in Disney mm -hmm. World, surrounded by all these fabulous things, Universal and all mm -hmm. these movies. So tell my audience, what happened after that? So after that, um, like I said, originally I was obsessed with the parks themselves and I, I loved the rides and everything. So I started, uh, I, I would get these, these papers and I would just start sketching together ride concepts. And, um, but uh, at a certain point I realized, you know what, I'm, I'm kind of doing the same thing over and over here. Um, so I started looking more at, at the rides that I had experienced myself. Like I mentioned, like, like a Jaws or a Back to the Future or a King Kong, whatever it may be. And just um, started looking at the way that the, the stories were told. And I felt at the same time, kind of like, you know, well, you can, you can kind of experience a ride when you're watching a movie. And so that kind of became my way to, to make like a ride is uh, getting to tell a story for an hour and a half or two hours, whatever it may be. And uh, that's how I got into uh, filmmaking. So now your concept for your ideas for films, it sounds like you like science fiction. Is that, mm -hmm. is that what you, cause I could tell yeah. a little bit about the movie that you just created that mm -hmm. it has like a science fiction sort of theme about the movie. Now, tell my audience what inspired you to make this film. Uh, the name is Smokescreen, right? It's an interesting Smoke screen, yes, that's correct. Yeah, so for, um, for Smokescreen in particular, that one is much more of a uh, political thriller um, than it is uh, science fiction. Right. Now, the, the new one that I just wrote, and that is much more science fiction um, elements to it. Um, but this one right now, Smokescreen, that I came out with, um, it uh, a few years ago. I don't know if you remember the Solyndra uh, scandal. It was a green energy company. It was a solar panel company, and they they received I think it was about five hundred fifty million dollars um, from the feds to create these solar panels. And then maybe two months after they received these funds, they went bankrupt. And I you know thought that was kind of odd that that would happen two months after you receive $550 million. And so I thought to myself, well, what, what if that was done on purpose, you know? And from there, I kind of got this idea of, okay, well, we've got a fake energy company who's going to take this money. Uh, but then suddenly there's a, uh, an attorney general that gets appointed who is going to look into these, um, you know, these loans that are, that are being put out there by the feds and he starts snooping around just a little too much. Is he the attorney general of the president of the United States? Correct. He's like an incoming attorney general. And so he starts looking a little more into some of these subsidies that are being given out. And uh, he starts snooping just a little too bit. There's, you know, there's some people who aren't happy that they're not going to receive that money. And so they actually try to pull off an assassination attempt on him, but they fail. And then they have to regroup. They, uh, they run away to Brooklyn and have to be held up inside a warehouse. Why Brooklyn? Be That's because, where I was born, by the way, right. Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, the, the attempt was supposed to happen in Manhattan when he was staying you know, in, a, uh, in a hotel there in Manhattan, but they, oh. uh, they, they botched the job, and so they have to escape. And uh, it's two accountants from the company who, who are coerced into trying this assassination attempt. Uh, and you know, they're completely out of their element. And so now they're being held by the guys who hired them. And uh, it's just, uh, it all just kind of builds from there. I see. Now, but what, why did you want to make a movie like this? Uh, you know what? Um, it, was, it was not only that story about Solyndra, but uh, I, you know, after a while, I just started getting antsy because I wasn't, uh, um, I had just done a short film called uh, The Pilgrim. And um, you know, I was kind of like, okay, you know, I did that. Now it's time to do a feature. And I just, like I say, I, I got antsy and I was like, okay, I'm writing this thing. Let's do this. Now tell my audience um, about the cast in the film. How many actors in the film? Uh, I think there's about, I mean, there's about 20 overall. Um, a lot of them 
I knew beforehand I had them in mind for certain roles as I was writing uh, the film. Um, and then, uh, you know, the other half, I would say, was, was recommended to me through those people I already knew. Um, there's, there's some recognizable faces that you'll see in there. Um, Aisha Wax is one of them. Um, she was um, on maybe 30 plus uh, films. She, was, uh, she starred with Sam Rockwell, Paul Giamatti, uh, you name it. Um, she I started with them. Paul Giamatti in the Hamptons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, uh, Dachin Thurman is in there. That's uh, Uma Thurman's brother. Right, um, I saw that. I did yeah. see that. Yeah, Cameron Johnson. He's uh, he's real big right now. He's in uh, the Batwoman uh, TV show. Um, and then other than that, like I said, uh, it's some of these guys that I've met before who uh, who have been um, here and there in the industry. So you knew all of the actors before you actually put them in the film. You had an idea. This is the part that I want each of these mm -hmm. people to play. Uh, yeah, a, about half of them I did. Um, when it comes to the main villain, I for sure. Uh, that's the person I had in mind for it, and he played it exactly the way I wanted him to. Um, and uh, there's just a few other he roles. Looks like, yeah. so, he looks like a tourist from the trailer you sent me. He looks like he's like perfect for the part. He's like Exactly. Perfect. Exactly. It's funny because he, the film before that I saw him in, he actually played a, uh, a Catholic priest. And in this one, he's like the complete opposite of that. Well, but but I knew... Bad. That's a good right. actor. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I could tell just by looking at him that he would be able to pull it off. A good actor, you forget who they are. Mm -hmm. You know, you forget their persona. That's what a good actor is. That's why, you know, Miss Merrill. By the way, I was in that movie, The Devil Is Proud of It. You'll never oh. see me in the movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because <laughs> Miss Merrill said, I'm the only one that has that platinum blonde white hair. What was she now? Platinum blonde. She had white hair. Uh -huh. I'm the only one, so she told the director, I do not want this girl in the movie. So they had to like, uh, they used yeah. me, they did use me, but you right. can't see me. They blow right. me in the background, you know what I mean? Yeah. But after yeah. the film, the director came over to me, he was talking to me, he said, I understand that you have a TV show, I understand that you interviews people, what's the name of your show, what's your website? And some of yeah. the actors were talking to me too, uh, you know, after, after we filmed. So mm -hmm. that was a lot of fun. Now, uh, let me ask you, this film, is this your first or second in sequence? Is this, have you done more films? I mean, you just said you did a short mm -hmm. film. In sequence, how many films have you done so far? So as far as feature films are concerned, that's my first and only as okay. of now. Um, I've, of course, before that, I've done uh, two kind of bigger short films. But um, I, you know, I won't really count the ones that I did in school because those are, you know, assignments for school. So they, they don't necessarily count because they don't, they don't go to film festivals. And that They're not professional, in other words. Correct. Yeah. And the, and, yeah. But the two short films I did before this one, I would, I would count among those because they did go to festivals, win awards, that sort of thing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's the first feature film uh, so far. What have, tell my audience some of the, uh, film festivals that have shown your films? Okay, so I've been to the Anthem Film Festival out in Las Vegas. That um, has probably been one of my favorite ones to go That's to. That's a good one, by the way. I heard about that one. It's very yeah. good. Yeah, and, um, and partial, you know, that uh, uh, goes without saying that it's in Las Vegas, so that uh, that's always a good, good reason right. to go to it. Um, but uh, I think that was probably the first... Um, yeah, that was probably the first film festival that I got into and went to at the same time because I, there are a few film festivals that I got into but didn't actually get a chance to go to because either they were in England or, or Australia. And, I, know, see. Sometimes I see. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes you can't make it. I know. Uh, I realize that. Mm -hmm. But it's always but, good to submit. The next one you have to go to after all of this is over with the COVID, you mm -hmm. have to go to the uh, the one in the Cannes Film Festival. I've always oh, wanted yeah. to go to that one, the Cannes Film Festival. Mm -hmm. So um, now let me ask you, was this a difficult film to direct, to create? Was it, did you have challenges with this film? Well, certainly. Um, and I self-funded this, uh, this film that I just did, Smokescreen. Um, so there was, uh, you know, not only did I write and direct and play one of the characters in it, but I also yeah. 
had to, you know, book the locations, uh, man manage the production while we're on set. Um, so you do end up spending a lot more time kind of watching how you're spending the money. Um, and sometimes you, you do wish you had a little more time to direct or, or think much more about, you know, shot compositions here and there. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, that's, that was probably the big one. Um, having, to, having to finance it on your own, that, that makes it real hard. Uh, you would think that it comes with a lot more freedom, but it, not quite, especially when you're booking a space for, okay, we got this space for however many thousand dollars for eight hours. Okay, we got we to gotta go. We got to get this done. You end up spending a lot more time doing that. Not only that, but the challenge is to direct and produce and act. You wear many hats. Mm -hmm. So you're not just concentrating on the acting. You're concentrating on everything. And it's a little hard. Mm -hmm. it's, I always tell filmmakers when I interview them that if they're in the film, it's, it is a challenge to be able, you know, you have to direct other actors and then you have to, you know, act yourself. And mm -hmm. it, so you can't always focus so much on the acting. You have to, you have to look at the, you have to look at everything that's going on. Correct. So now this is another question. I believe that you collaborated with my dear, dear friend, Richard Allen. Mm -hmm. Tell my audience how the two of you met and how he has collaborated with you on this film. So Richard Allen, I met him maybe two years ago at a book signing. Uh, my good friend, Aisha Wax, uh, she was uh, having a book signing and a mutual friend of ours, um, Adam Kluger, who's a big PR oh, agent. Oh, yes, Adam, was, I'm friendly with him too. He knows yeah. me. Yeah, well, we were all there. We were having a, having a great time. We're at this bookstore in Manhattan. And uh, while I was kind of standing around, uh, Richard came over. And uh, he introduced himself and said, you know, I own a model and talent agency. Uh, what do you do? I told him. And so he was like, okay, well, you know, I have these events that I do once a month. Why don't you come by and uh, we'll talk shop. And so we did. And uh, ever since then, we've, we've been working closely together. Mm -hmm. And so now this, um, he, you know, he's helping me promote uh, Smokescreen um, to try to get people to see it. Um, and, uh, but aside from that, he's really helping me with the new film that I just wrote. Um, as far as getting it into the hands of people who are going to push this thing forward. Because this one that we're going to do is, uh, well, it certainly won't be self-funded uh, by me. Uh, no. It's going to be much more substantial project. Um, and uh, he's just, he's been super helpful so far, uh, getting it into certain people's hands. And a lot of people have shown interest so far in it. Okay. That's the science fiction film. Yeah, it's like sci-fi horror. Yeah, for some reason, those movies do so well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People want to see horror. They want to see science fiction. Mm -hmm. You know, I like science fiction. Sure. Part of the I, incentive to make I them. <laughs> feel like I'm in a science fiction movie right now with this oh, we all do. going we on. We all do. Yep, I we all mean, do. <laughs> That's another thing. Have you found this to be a challenge um, with the COVID going on? Because right now they're not filming anything. It's hard to even film anything. Is, has this been a challenge for you with the coronavirus? So they, I mean, obviously there's nothing really going on as far as shooting is concerned. Yeah. But now, now is the time, though, to kind of regroup and do any kind of writing that, that you want to do a future project on because now people do have the time to sit and not have other distractions and and get something done so that's that actually kind of in a way helped me finish this new one that we're about to do I see I see so you are very excited about this new film coming up absolutely yeah okay so well that's terrific and um we're going to take a look now at this trailer that you sent me, this new film, Smokescreen. By the mm -hmm. way, before we look at the trailer, what, why did you call it Smokescreen? What was the reason for that name? 
So uh, it's actually, it's funny because I've actually wanted to use that title for a long time, but it's, you know, everyone is not kind of who they seem when it comes to the film. And also the situation is, is not what it seems. It's, it's all about a big distraction for something else. And that's, that's essentially what a smoke screen is. I feel is. like that's what's going on in our world right now, right? <laughs> It, I, it happens quite often. <laughs> yeah, I feel like this is happening right now. What, we, uh -huh. what we're going through right now with the presidency and the election and the coronavirus and all of that. It's like Certainly. a big distraction. Whatever, whatever's re whatever they're really doing over there, do we really know what's really going on? You know, Probably we all not. Have theories. <laughs> we all have theories about what's really going on, but what is really going on? But mm -hmm. anyway, we're going to take a look at this trailer right now, and we're gonna close the interview. So take, let's take a look. It would seem you too have failed me. Why is Douglas Geiger still alive? Did you see what they just appointed Attorney General? Don't worry about it. Don't you think they're going to want to know exactly where their money's going? Do you know how insignificant $400 million is in the grand scheme of things? Steve, we're talking about people that pass bills that they've never read. The solar main facility in Southern Nevada is non-existent. I have called the Nevada facility a number of times. Nobody's ever answered. So what? $600 million is insane. I just want to balance the books. Is that too much to ask? Unless your title is CEO, CIO, CFO, or something like that, your job is to follow orders. You trusted two accountants to pull off a high-level assassination. The executive is here. If a high-profile politician is stupid enough to pay for a hooker using a credit card, well, we can have that opportunity like that pass us by. Call me. Ray Mason was too expensive. This person does the job. He's a professional. The best. Bar the door. Make sure this one doesn't get out. I do conjure thee, O thou Belial. Tick tock. Well, welcome back, darlings. I hope you enjoyed the trailer. And I'm speaking, of course, to filmmaker, sexy filmmaker, Sean Butler. So, Sean, darling, tell my audience, where can we go to learn more information about this film? Best place you can go to, Amazon.com, and just search for Smokescreen. It's uh, 2018 is going to be the year title that you're looking for. You can always look for my name, Sean Butler, S-E-A-N. B-U-T-T-I-M-E-R, and that's me. Well, darling, I certainly enjoy interviewing you. Thank you so much for coming on Cognac's Corner. And if you come out with another film, when you come out with your new film, the science fiction one that you're talking about, let me know, because I want to talk to you about that film as well. Absolutely. And thank you, you so much. I wish I was there to give thank you, you for having me. a big pink champagne kiss. Mwah. Thank you. Mwah. Thank you, darling. <laughs> Welcome back, darlings. I hope you enjoyed my Zoom interview with Mr. F filmmaker, Mr. Sean Buttermer. Keep watching, darlings. More exciting Zoom interviews coming up. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And please leave me some comments. I want to find out what you like and what you don't like and what kind of videos you would like me to make. So keep watching. Pink champagne kisses. Hello, darlings. You've all heard of Marilyn Monroe. Some of you know Bridget Fardell. Well, now it's time for the cognac show. I said the cognac. Fabulously dressed to impress One of a kind girl I was brought into this world Wrapped up in pearls I love to mingle Though my husband reminds me I'm not single I 
Productions, darlings.